All right, so what we're talking about today is not small block 302s. This just happens to be an engine that we have on an engine stand here in the shop, making it easier to do my talking points today. We're going to be talking about what you need to look for when you are uh, trying to buy an engine, say, to do a builder with. Like you're looking for uh, a certain level of 350 small block or 383 or, you know, a 351 Windsor, whatever it is. If you're looking at buying a long or a short block from a facility to build, these are some of the things you're going to want to check out because you may end up getting an engine that's actually good enough that you can just run the bottom end the way it is, do the roadkill thing, and just run what you're wrong and hope for the best. But it's also going to make it so that you're going to possibly want to rebuild the engine and you want to know just how bad it is. In other words, you may have a broken crank in the engine. It may just be totally done in. Or you may have one that's working just fine, only needs to be ground down 1010, and it's good to go. Final P. While this is draining down, I'm going to go and grab a couple tools and see what it does when I try to rotate it. I can't rotate it in normal run. I'm going to rotate it backwards, but see if we get any rotation out of this piece of crap. Because this engine's been in there. It's, it's been in a mix for a while. We'll see what we got. All right, so I've got my breaker bar on here. I've got a 15 16 wrench on the uh, bolt for the snout. We don't have the harmonic balancer or the timing cover on the small block 302 because I wanted to take all that stuff off prior so that you could see just how bad our friendly timing chain is. That's one of the, that's a really bad one. It's in pretty bad shape. It would still run okay, but your timing is probably going to be a little bit off because of the stretch. So that's one of the things you're going to run into whenever you're in an engine situation where the timing chain hasn't been done, but that's for another time. So what I'm going to talk about now is I'm going to say that whenever you're looking at one of these things in a salvage yard, if you can at all get a wrench on it, pull all the spark plugs out of it and do a rotation of the engine before you do anything else. If it doesn't rotate freely, run. Oddly enough, for having sat up as long as this one has, it seems to be rotating pretty well. All the lifters are moving up and down. We've already obviously uh, pulled everything out. All right, you'll notice that that particular push rod is actually rotating like they're supposed to when it's running. It's not completely rotating, but it's really not doing that badly. So we know that we got a rotating small block 302 here. We know that it's not making any weird noises. We're not hearing any crunchy sounds when it rotates, so we're pretty good. All right, you'll notice that right here, there's a bunch of schmutz inside of the uh, eccentric for the fuel pump. That's a bad sign right there to me on an engine. That tells me that this sucker has been run a lot, either with low oil situations and a lot of heat, or possibly just not had the oil changed. And there are some instances where that could be from paraffin, but what you can have is, is this crumbly stuff can fall off down into the oil pan and get sucked up into the pickup and start plugging the pickup, which is going to reduce your oil pressure, which is going to make things start to burn. You're going to start having problems with, with mains and things like that when you see this kind of schmutz inside of an engine. Um, probably some of this stuff could be pulled off and cleaned up. You could take this thing and put some diesel in it. <laughs> I'm not recommending this, but you could possibly put some diesel in an engine like this to uh, loosen some of this stuff up, but you will have to, at that point, probably go in, not probably, put a new oil pump and screen system on it because the screen's gonna probably be pretty trashed. I'm really curious to see what the screen on this one looks like, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pull the pan off and down since it does look like there's still some stuff in the bottom of it, and I wanna see what's down inside the pan. Hopefully a million dollars. But I have a feeling this is going to be much more like the Geraldo Rivera thing where he opened up, I don't know, was it Capone's Crip? Okay, so I'm going to get some stuff and pull the pan off. All right, so uh, we pulled the pan off and basically they're all 7 16 bolts. The only ones that are not are the two at the front and the back right by the rear main seals. 
This bolt was not in here originally. That fell in at some point when the engine had the timing cover off. It was up on top of the engine and it flopped down into the hole. I remember when that happened. So this is not really a concern to me. Uh, some of this particulate in here may also be from the timing cover, but there's an awful lot of it in the bottom of the pan is kind of slimy. There's things in here that I'm not sure if that's from engine damage you know, like from stuff just dropping down inside the pan. But this is a perfect example of why you want a oil screen on your pickup. Because right here, this kind of stuff is a problem. Now, once that oil on the bottom of that pan gets hot, a lot of this stuff, if you really nail down on it, may be pulled up onto the screen and you may see a low oil pressure signal from the car. That's why. Uh, the pan overall looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's got a lot of miles on it, so that's not really... This is all indicative of that. This is not, but I don't know if that's just from us pulling the covers off of this thing or what, and a lot of that falling down inside there because we were really not worried about it. We were just going to go ahead and use this as a rebuilder engine when I got it <clears throat> 20, uh, 20 years ago. It's been a minute. So I'm not still quite concerned yet. I'm going to roll this thing over now, and we're going to check out the screen on the oil pickup and uh, pump. And then we're also going to pull a couple mains and take a look at that. And that's all we're going to have time for today because i got a lot of other things going on trying to get the shop done for some stuff we've got coming up in April for our patrons. So let me go ahead and get on that, roll this bad boy over, and see what we have. Hopefully it's good. All right, so I've got the engine rolled over. I'm looking at the uh, oil pickup. These are places that your indications of a bad situation start. You'll note how big this screening is on the pickup. That's what your oil filter on the engine is for. If it gets past here, uh, it goes through the filter and then goes out into the engine. The filter should be picking up any main particulate that's going to be coming in and causing a problem after it comes into the pan. But this is going to be going into your oil pump and it can affect the gears and all of that. This is a sacrificial part as far as the engine is concerned. You can take the oil pump and replace it. But you don't want to do that if you don't have to. And this engine has a pretty good bit of muck in it. And the bottom end is in marginal shape. I, <laughs> I honestly might could go in, clean this thing up a little bit, and run it like it is. But I'm not done with my checks yet. One of the first things I'm doing is I'm looking down through the engine here. And I can see that there are some cam lobes that are discolored and scored. That tells me that there's been contamination in the engine that's caused some of the lifters to seize up in the bore. They're still operating, but they're not spinning like they're supposed to. That cam lobe should be mirror-like. You can see part of one of the cam lobes in here is, and there are a couple others, the one that was actually spinning correctly in there, the cam lobe looks really nice on it. It's got a nice mirror finish like it's supposed to. But that cam is junk. You're not going to be using that cam for anything. You'll need to pull it out and replace it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out and I'm going to take one main cap off just to see what the crank looks like underneath there because I want to know whether or not the, uh, the crank itself is in good shape. I'm not going to do an in play because I'm probably not going to be able to do that at a junkyard. You're just doing main inspections at this point to make sure of whether or not you want to buy this engine. If you pull a main cap off and the crank is, bro is broken there, you should probably stay away from that engine. But I'm going to grab my tools and pop that cap off. We have a competition going with the neighbors. Every time I do this, he didn't do it that time. Of course, because we're trying to show what he's doing, but he's hitting an impact wrench at the same time I'm doing it. It's the little things in life. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this main cap off here. I'll probably have to get my rubber hammer after it or maybe a dead blow. I'm going to try to pull these off. And yes, I know that this is not a correct socket. My three-quarter uh, impact socket is conveniently missing because I have children. And they just grab anything out of the toolbox they want. Nope, I may have to get the breaker bar after this. Yep, I'm going to have to get the breaker bar after it. Well, that's good. The main caps are nice and tight. So we know we got a good situation going with that. If that main cap was really loose, we, <laughs> once again, it would be an indication of trouble. 
that one was not quite as tight, but it was still, it still ticked whenever I took it off, and you want to have that. Okay, I'm gonna have to get something to whack that. Now all of my dead blows have died, so I'm using a leather hammer here. Let's see if I can knock that loose. There we go. Wow. All right. Now you can look at this and see that we've got a fairly even wear pattern on the main bearings. The actual crank itself is not really scored, but you can tell there's been some contaminant in the oil because you can see some wear in there. It's not mirror finish. And that wear that you're seeing is probably indicative of the fact that the oil on this thing wasn't changed very much, but I'm not seeing anything here that makes me feel like, yeah, we're in trouble. We need to walk away from this engine because it looks like the wear pattern is pretty consistent. It's just got a lot of wear from being driven and used. This is actually not too bad. You'll see though, that because it's, the crank actually sits on the base of this, that most of your wear is down here in the bottom. It hasn't completely going, gone through the copper and gotten into the steel base of the bearing itself. I ain't saying I would run it the way it is, but I'm also saying that it's probably a good engine to go in and do some stuff to. I don't know for a fact if these are original Ford bearings in there, if this thing has never been into. Um, because I really don't know if they even part numbered these. If you do, put a comment in the section below and tell me how I could find that out on these. I have never really looked at them to see. But the bearing material actually looks pretty good. It hasn't spun a bearing uh, on this one. If the rest of these were to come out looking as nice as that one looks, I would be a very happy camper. I'm not gonna go in and pull, but possibly one more. All right, so we do have something that is of a bit of a concern here, and that is this marking on the actual crank itself. This would probably require a turning. Uh, you're gonna typically turn a crank down 1010 if you're rebuilding it, but I, and you could run this. Once again, if you wanted to take your risks and take your chances, you could go in and run this the way it is and probably maybe last for a while and be okay. Uh, the bearing material in here, Again, it's exhibiting some issues from the oil not being changed enough. There is a little bit of scoring on here, but the Babbitt material is still pretty good. It feels like it may have a little bit of uh, uh, offloading, side loading here because there is more wear on this side right here of the crank, and this could be because of crank throw. That section right there is far more worn than this. Now, I don't know if that's indicative of what's going on with the crank, but that is a problem. This is more concerning to me, and I don't know whether that's a water damage situation or a possible fault in the original crank. Uh, it's not shaling off, but you can, you can run a fingernail across it and actually catch it. Yeah, you can see some really bad scoring right here on the crank as I turn it around. There's your oil hole. If you're building one of these, go in and have them chamfer the oil holes. If you don't chamfer the oil holes, it can be a real problem. Well, not a problem. It's just a good idea to chamfer these so that you get better oil penetration around the main. That's, that would require a grind and possibly even more than just grinding it. Uh, there could be more damage there. Wiper here. So there's another spot where it's got some scoring issues in it. See that right there? Spot where we were at before, yeah. Not looking good back here on this rear mains setup. So that makes me wanna pull this one back off. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that right now. That's gonna be indicative of an issue right here on the bottom end that that crank's gonna to have to be turned. I'm gonna take and pull uh, one of the pistons off or pull the main cap off the piston if I can get it to come loose and take a look at what we've got there. All right, this engine was out of a 1971 Maverick, uh, the first year for the 302 to be available in the Maverick. And the, the car was trash, but the engine was in okay shape and I was looking at it as a possible rebuilder. I got given the engine, so if I'm gonna get the engine for free 20 years ago, I'm gonna get the engine because, you know, hoarders hoard. <laughs> So, but what I'm looking at is knowing now that this is probably all original in this engine block, somebody may have gone in and changed the oil pump on it or whatever at some point, but they have not gone into the bottom end on this engine because we have a, a stamp here 
of 1070. Now the block is stamped for a, a, uh, a 1970 block date and month code that corresponds closely with this. And it's a C5 OE part number on this with the Ford oval. That tells me that these bearings are probably the original ones to the engine and this is the original crank assembly never been messed with, never been touched, which explains why the bearings are in kind of okay shape. After engines get a little older, people stop giving too much of a crap about them and things like this start happening where they just quit taking care of it and they don't get the oil changed and then you start seeing wipe problems with bearings, starts losing oil pressure. And the reason it's losing oil pressure is the main bearings are no longer, uh, they no longer have their original Babbitt material on there, which should be a nice, bright, shiny silver, not copper color like you're seeing. Um, this one is actually not in too bad a shape. It has some of the same scoring issues that you saw on the main bearings, but you're not gonna see as much of a problem on this as you might on the mains. Um, so yeah, we now have knowledge that this is an original small block 302, unmolested on the bottom end. Don't know if I'll be able to get that piston to come back up here so I can seat it again. Put the bearing on the main. And there's only one way these will go. You'll see there's a notch in the, uh, in the main cap for it. And yeah, I'm not that worried about it because it's, you know, if it's dirty, it's dirty. And I'm going to put this back on here just to put it all back together. I would not run this engine because of what I see with the rear. Plus, I'd want to go in and put ARP fasteners, you know, just do this engine guy stupid stuff that you do you know it's going to see 8,000 rpm right no probably not all right so we know now what we got um what i'm going to talk about next is when you're doing an engine what do you look for in those cases when you pull the engine apart what are some of the bearing issues that you can see we've already seen what they look like when they're completely wiped but there's other things that can happen in reality it doesn't matter a whole lot at this point what's causing those problems they are just problems if the bearings are nice, clean, silver, you know that somebody's probably either been into it or the engine is fairly low miles and the oil was changed fairly regularly. If you have scoring that is impacting the crank like we saw on the rear main on this thing, you've got an issue with particulate possibly in the oil. Uh, also, there can be some spots where the, uh, the bearings or the main crank is blued. If that's the case, don't buy it because the crank is trashed. You won't be able to reuse it. All right, so looking at this engine, I would probably say, no, I'm not gonna buy it from a salvage yard. There are a couple of lines in here that are fingernail lines. I can actually catch my nail on it. The crank on the rear main back here seems very, very rough. This picking of the metal here on the crank worries me a good bit for using this crank for anything. I don't know that we could turn that out and get rid of it with a 1010 turn, which is where you kinda wanna be when you're doing this. 1010 is about the max I like to go that's entirely up to you, but I want a 1010 on my turn on the crank. Um, that is not gonna come out. I think we would be done with this one right here at this point. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna spin the engine over and just kind of pull a cylinder head off and take a look at everything. But before I do that, I wanna talk about other things you can see besides this kind of stuff that could just call time of death on it. If you see bluing on any of the mains that you pull off and the, the crank itself has a blue cast to it. That means the crank has gotten hot and that main is trashed. And that means that the crank is trashed because it's been annealed in that certain spot and the metal is just going to possibly do what this has been doing, which is shearing off and causing problems in the engine. It'll probably blow itself apart. Um, if the Babbitt material is pretty much all gone and you're down to the steel, that's going to have affected that crank shaft at that point on that main and you're going to uh, you're going to have a problem there too. What I mean by that is there are, there are levels of Babbitt material on the bearings themselves. And with that Babbitt material, you have a shiny silver, you have a copper, and then you have the steel of the actual bearing itself. When you get down to the steel, you're done. There's been a problem within that engine that's going to cause that crank to probably on that main be visually trashed. You'll be able to look at it and see that the crank is actually damaged. Any of those things are indicators that you should probably walk away from the engine. 
Uh, and it's just something that you need to know if you're going to go buy one of these out of the salvage yard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this sucker over and I'm going to pull a cylinder head off of it and look at the bores on the pistons for a junkyard inspection, not sitting there with mics and all that kind of stuff to see what we got. So I'm going to get this thing over and roll it out. It's very heavy. See, it's very heavy. I don't know what to do. I'm going to grab Cam Big Bry Bar. Huzzah! All right, so I what I just did is, is I loosened up the rocker arm assemblies so that all of these were hanging loose so it doesn't hopefully pull a push rod up when it comes out. If the push rods hopefully will stay in their bores down here, fall over in position so I could put them back if I so desired and all the rocker arms and fulcrums and everything would stay in place so that they're not being mixed and matched. All these components could go back in the way they were originally. It's theoretical, but it should work. I saw it in a cartoon once. Now we got studs that hold everything in place. This is where I would normally have Cam do all the heavy lifting crap. But he's not here this weekend, so... Oh, that I didn't stay where they wanted him. I'll be back in a minute. This thing's heavy. Okay, so um, here's what I've got. Pull the cylinder head off. The the con or the um, the push rods fell in. These actually don't look like they're in too bad a shape. I don't think I'd want to run them on an engine, but they're not blued or anything. This one's a little out of kilter, but all the rest of them look like they're pretty good. Probably just like I said before, the cam has a good bit of scoring on it, so some of these lifters are not spinning on the cam like they're supposed to. A couple of them are indicating to me that the engine is is you know it's just worn out. It's old. Um, what you'll want to do if you're looking at a block, if you can get it to this point right here, is to start checking for wear on the top and bottom of the cylinder. This is the bottom, this is the top, and you're looking for how much wear there is in the cylinder bore. This block, because it's a small block 302, could possibly be redone, but there is a really big ridge on number five. Like all the way around ridge. Not as bad on the top, mostly it's, it's load wear, or wear load going out, like where the piston has been pushing out this way on number five. I haven't done this one yet. I'd have to roll the engine down and see what that one looks like. Um, if it's on an engine stand, you can do that. If it's on the ground, that might be a little bit tougher. But that number five piston, is it's pretty worn. And there's a mighty ridge there. I mean, I'm, I'm catching a thumbnail hard on it. Rest of them, there's wear in them. This one has more uh, forward load on it. Oh, no. Lifters fell over. Or, excuse me, the push rods fell over. I don't know. Uh, I might would look at this one for something to use. But there's a lot of... Thrust, I would call it thrust wear. I don't know if that's the correct term, but I'm catching fingernails right here, except on this one where it just extends all the way around the bottom part of the bore here. Again, will I use this engine on something? Possibly, because if I go to like a 347 small block with this thing or a 331, I'm going to overboard it and I'm also going to put a different crank in it. So the block could be a good usable block. It is a 1970 block, so it's an early 302 block. I don't know. I look at things like this and I sometimes think maybe it'd be just better to go out and buy a crate engine that's got a warranty on it and then, you know, call them folks up when there's a problem with it rather than me trying to go back to the engine shop locally and say, hey man, you did something wrong. 
And he looks at me and says, no, you did something wrong because I didn't put it together, you did. There and by the rub, should we have had a, you know, different setup? I don't know. The bees are back. Andrew's getting nervous. We need to button this thing up or Andrew may run. He's frightened of bees. And these things won't even hurt him. But anyway, I digress. Would I buy this engine? No, probably not. And I'll tell you why. The scoring in the, uh, the cylinders, the, the walls themselves are in pretty good shape, but uh, it does have the ridge in it. Now that could be indicative of a lot of miles on the engine. I don't know, part of me says if you want to do it, you know, buy it, build a 331 with it because you can take a 302 and bore it out pretty heftily. If it was a small block 350, that would be almost nothing because again, you can bore that one out pretty high. If it was a Cleveland or certain other engine series that have a very thin wall on the cylinder boards, I would walk away with the ridge because that would tell me that I'm going to be going over what I should probably go to keep the engine from running hot because of hot spotting within the cylinders. Um, but on a small block 302, I mean, this might, would make a pretty good 331, 347 small block candidate because it has some of the things that you would need on a small block 302 because like it has the boss for the uh, four speed if you wanted to run a 331 with a four speed. Why you would do that, I don't know because I would do like a five speed with a hydraulic clutch from the guys at Modern Driveline, do a TK. Anyway, I'm getting off into the hinterland and I realize that. So getting back Back to the main germane thing we're going to be talking about today is subscribing to the channel. Come on, man, subscribe to the channel. We're getting a lot of good information here. We're shooting for 100,000 viewers sometimes within the next 10 to 15 years. So if you guys could help us get to that, that would be awesome. Just subscribe. You can get notifications if you want. If you don't want the notifications, that's just fine too. As long as you subscribe to the channel, it helps us and it'll help you in the long run because you can one day say, I helped them get to 100,000 subscribers right before the old man died. Hopefully it'll be this year, because we're at like 88,000. Unless the guys at YouTube do some kind of crazy call like they've done in the past where I lost like 5,000 subscribers. Beyond that, please do us a favor and check out the Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. We get all together, there's, there's probably 20, 30 guys in there. It's nuts, and gals. We have gals joining up as well. Um, so it is pretty nutty and fun. We do tech Q and A. We, we just, you know, enjoy talking to each other. I give them tips on things that are going on around here that you don't get whenever I'm doing the shows on a normal weekly, especially right now with us putting the shop up, they're getting to know things that you won't know because, you know, you don't, probably don't really care about my frustration level with putting up a shop as much as I do. The big reason for Patreon though is you get tech stuff from us and you're helping to buy ramen for Andrew so that Andrew can have gas to get to work on a daily basis so that Andrew can take his girlfriend out on a nice date to McDonald's or, or maybe, maybe Wendy's because Wendy's is actually a little cheaper than McDonald's, I gotta say. And the restaurant is open to you, know, you walking in and sitting down. Around here, they're not for some reason. None of them didn't have opened up that I know of. I never go to McDonald's, so I don't know for sure. And you don't care at this point because I'm talking and blathering about McDonald's. However, that $10 a month helps Andrew, helps me pay Andrew for what he does. It also helps to buy pizzas and stuff for the kids that come in here and work on Saturdays. We have a youth program that we do here where we have young people coming in and working with us on the weekly. Uh, all of them are out this week, but and it's just Andrew and I today because Cam, I'm not even sure I want to tell you this. Cam bought a 350, an F-350 service truck. And it's an obsession now. I think he's probably sitting around semi-naked at his house looking at pictures of F-350s, eating food and thinking about the next thing he's gonna do to make it run. That's visually disturbing. In any case, you guys be kind to each other, love on each other, have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. Now, because I've been a kind guy and I've given you all this information on what can look like to have an engine, I now have about three quarts of oil on the floor on my brand new floor and an engine that's basically multiple levels of disassembled, which I'm going to have to put back together so I can shove it in a corner for another 20 years. 
Because realistically, I'm probably not going to build this engine. Just saying. Why? Why would I do that to myself? I mean, I might, but I can buy a crate for like, I don't know, three or four grand. And it'll run good. And it'll have a warranty that I can call them up and go, hey, dude, your engine destroyed itself. And just like working with the local shops, they're probably going to tell me, that's on you, not on us. Kind of depressing myself. I want to go do something else, like put up drywall in my studio space for days and days and days and days and days and days. And days.